Vermiculture and Fisheries Vermiculture Cultivation of earthworm for decomposing organic waste into nutrient-rich manure is called as vermicompost or vermiculture. Vermicomposting is a bio-oxidation process of organic materials and involves a joint action of earthworms and microorganisms. Types of earthworm species Epigenic species These are the species that feed on the surface. Isenia fetida, Eudrelius eugenae and Lampito moritil. Endogenic species. These are the species that feed on the surface. Feed on humus and minerals. Dig horizontal burrows in the soil. They are important in soil formation processes, soil mixing and aeration. Example, Ferritima posthuma, Lumbricus rubellus. Anasix species. Dig deep vertical burrows in the soil. Feed on partially decomposed litter, manure and other organic matter debris and minerals. Important in decomposition of material, organic, nutrient recycling and soil formation. For example, Lumbricus terrestris. Earthworm species used in vermiculture. The epigenic species are commonly used as manure worm in vermiculture, such as exotic species Isenia fetida. It is commonly called as red worm or European worm. It has fast growth rate and produces one cocoon every day. Each cocoon produces one to three earthworms. The optimum temperature required is 20 to 28 degrees Celsius. Eudrillus eugenie. It is often called as African worm or night crawler. In India, it is mainly used for vermiculture in South India. The species grows at a temperature of 19 to 22 degrees Celsius. Rearing of earthworms. Breeding and rearing of earthworms in controlled conditions is vermiculture. The container used for vermicomposting is called a vermi box. Vermi box is filled in stepwise manner as shown in the figure. The first layer. At the bottom 2 or 3 inches, thick layer of any biodegradable fibrous matter is laid down. The second layer. 2 to 3 inches thick layer of cow dung is spread. The third layer. The bedding is sufficiently moistened by sprinkling water mixed with cow urine. The earthworms are released over it. The dry crop residues are spread over the earthworms 3 inches thick. Fourth layer. They are covered with small pieces of green leaves, household waste and biogas sewage. Fifth layer. A layer of fresh cow dung mixed with small pieces of leaves is added. Sixth layer. Then spread fine garden soil. The seventh layer. To prevent the loss of moisture from the vermiculture bed, the top is covered by paddy straw or gunny bag cloth. Water should be sprinkled regularly on the top cloth. Decomposition of organic waste depends on several factors. Activities of earthworms like burrowing, feeding and casting accelerate the process of decomposition. Usually, the process of formation of vermicompost is completed within 60 to 70 days. The waste material is changed into soft, spongy, dark brown colored compost. Importance of Vermiculture Vermicomposting is an eco-friendly, natural biofertilizer prepared from biodegradable organic wastes and is free from chemicals. It does not have an adverse effect on soil, plants and environment. It improves soil aeration, texture of soil making it less compact and also promotes soil fertility due to excellent microbial count. It improves water retention capacity of soil because of its high organic matter content. It promotes better root growth and nutrient absorption. It improves nutrient status of the soil. The earthworms are inefficient in nitrogen digestion. Therefore, their castings, part of the compost, increase the amount of nitrogen mineralized from organic matter in the soil. Not only nitrogen, but vermicompost gives more phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, zinc, copper, etc. to plants. It acts as a good nitrogen fixer because of the nitrogen fixing bacteria present in the vermicompost. Vermicompost stabilizes soil pH, plant nutrient contents of the soil and plant becomes more disease resistant. Fisheries The term fishery applies to collection, preservation, processing and marketing of various products received from water. Though the main product of this industry is fish, other products like mollusks, crustaceans, sponges, pearls, etc. are also considered under the same heading. The fishery involves marine fishery, sea water, fresh water or inland fishery, estuarine water fisheries. 
marine fishery sea water this fishery involves seas and the oceans the offshore and deep sea fishery differs in technique the offshore fishery is normally carried out by smaller vessels and nets the fishing trip is for about 1 or 2 days 2 or 10 fishermen operate these fishing vessels the catch is brought to the shore and then marketed the deep sea fishery involves more technical support the vessels used are trawlers and other larger vessels the crew size can be 25 to 100 the fishing trip is from 1 week to 1 month these vessels are provided with preservation facilities and also fitted with the processing and packaging units the major marine products are shark sardine mackerel bombay duck pomfret tuna inland fishery fresh water the fresh water resources include extensive river systems ponds lakes canals and reservoirs fresh water fishery includes both capture fishery and culture fishery capture fishery rivers and canals are the sources of capture fishery the principal capture fisheries are the katla rohu mrigal prawns etc culture fishery cultivation of fishes in artificially prepared ponds or water bodies is called pisciculture or fish farming pisciculture involves growing of fish right from the breeding stage to the adult stage the methodology can be described as follows breeders adult male and female are released in small container and allowed to breed these then breed and lay numerous eggs in clusters called as pawn the eggs are maintained in the hatchery with running water eggs hatch into small fishes called fry fry is then transferred into small ponds called nursery ponds hence they are provided with all optimum conditions like ph temperature feeding etc now they grow to the size of small fingerlings small fingerlings measurable to the size of 3 to 4 cm are collected in rearing ponds this is slightly larger sized pond in this pond they are allowed to grow to the size of larger fingerlings larger fingerlings 5 to 7 cm are then released into the stock pond this is a very large pond of about 2 to 3 hectares in size in this pond they are grown to the adult stage and then are netted out and marketed estuarine fishery when the fresh water river meets the marine water sea the estuaries are produced they are in different forms like creeks lagoons backwaters etc this zone changes constantly regarding its ph salinity and temperature the fishes which survive such changing conditions are available in this zone for example tiger prawn methods of fish capture various methods and means are employed by man to catch fish for food fishing crafts or boats any instrument or device to carry fishermen and gear to the fishing ground is called craft for example masula boat nauka trawlers fishing gear or nets any instrument or device to catch the fish is called a gear for example nets traps hooks nets dip net or lift net cast net purse net gill net economic importance fishes are rich source of proteins carbohydrates fats vitamins a d and e calcium iron omega fatty acids etc fish culturing or farming is a small business for self employment fishes are important agents of biological control feed on insect larvae and microorganisms shark liver oil cod liver oil have medicinal value rich in vitamin a and d waste parts of fishes are used to prepare the fertilizers and fish manure Fishes yield a number of byproducts such as fish meal, fish glue, fish flour, etc. Preservation of fishes. Fish is a quickly perishable commodity and it is spoiled if it is not preserved properly. Different methods of preservation are chilling with ice, deep freezing, freeze drying, smoking, sun drying and salting.